Okay. <clears throat> Part 3. The Gifting Ceremony. The Winter Feast was being held today. There was the winter debut and the baptism ceremony for children born in the winter, followed by the gifting ceremony for new students of the academy. Since I myself was a new student, Ferdinand was going to be performing this year's ceremonies. I had my hair done at a leisurely pace and changed into my outfit, all in all taking my time with my preparations. Sister, shall we go to the Grand Hall together? Charlotte asked, visiting my room as though she had been waiting for the very moment I was ready. I naturally agreed at once, and together we left my room. I have been so lonely, sister. You are finally living in the castle again. But due to your special lessons, I only ever get to see you during world practice and dinner. Charlotte is as cute as ever I see. Seeing that my little sister had grown taller than me was such a shock that it had come close to breaking my heart. But the instant she had thanked me for rescuing her and apologized for putting me in danger by distracting our guard my guard knights, my love for her smashed through the world with such overwhelming force that all my surprise was blown away in an instant. My little sister is so cute, so healthy, and so adorable. I took out my high beast and got inside, continuing to chat with Charlotte as I drove down the down the stairs. Wilfred was waiting for us at the bottom, having finished his preparations already. You're still using your high beast, he asked, blinking in surprise. I thought the potion was supposed to make you healthy. I technically am healthy now, but I can't walk without magic tools yet. What? Didn't you say you were training with Bone of Fascists in the Knight's Order? Are you trying to die? Wilfred exclaimed. He had undergone some training himself while his guard knights were being worked on, and so in his eyes, training with Bone of Fascists was equivalent to an act of suicide. I had certainly felt like I was on the verge of death at times, so perhaps that was the perspective everyone who trained with him ended up having. I think you... I think I agree with that. Grandfather is simply teaching me about enhanced magic. We haven't been doing anything too arduous. You've been making such swift progress during my dedica our, our dedication world practice, sister, that I thought you had already recovered entirely, Charlotte said, because you hadn't been noticing her wearing the tools they've been under her clothes. It seemed that she'd also assumed I had recovered over the past few weeks, but that couldn't have been further from the truth. At the moment, the plan is for me to remove the magic tools after returning from the Royal Academy, I explained. From there, I will work on slowly building my muscles back up. Keep this a secret if you can. I won't need to wear them for too much longer. With that, I started driving down the hall in Lesty. Wilfred and Charlotte were walking beside me while our guard knights circled around us in a tight formation. The three of us hadn't walked together since the attack two years ago, and I could sense that everyone was tensing up a little. I am a bit nervous about all this, but they did catch the culprit. We should be perfectly fine, Charlotte said with a smile, a small reassuring smile. Everyone else smiled a little as well, putting me slightly more at ease. Once we turned the last corner to the Grand Hall, I got out of my panda bus. I couldn't keep riding my high beast beyond this point, which meant I would be standing for just about the rest of the day. <coughs> will, will I really survive this? My worry must have shown in my face because Wilfred soon furrowed his brow and held out a hand to me. Rosemine, want to lean on my arm? No, I am such a slow walker that doing it so would only tire you out. You may go on ahead with Charlotte. I'll walk at my own pace. That's not an option. We've been told to stick together today. <coughs> Wilfred and Charlotte stood firm, so in the end, everyone ended up walking with me. We took our places at the very front of, the lo of those lined up in the Grand Hall, dragging all our guard knights along as well. I couldn't see much along the way due to all the knights around us, but the nobles who came to pre greet us all widened their eyes upon seeing me. I see that you have awakened, Lady Rosemine. What a joyous day! Now we can attend the Royal Academy together, Lady Rosemine. I can't wait! Indeed, Count Count Groschel Brunelda. Hilda, my sister, is at full health once again, Charlotte said, stepping forward and handling the nobles with a smile. <coughs> Brunhilde was to, Brunhilde, Brunhilde, whatever, was two years older than me. I remembered seeing her in the Winter Playroom three years ago. Her eyes were light brown, and she had straight hair that was pure crimson. From what I remembered, she was a fashion, fashionable girl who loved to talk, and she was the one who gathered all the information about fashion trends at the Royal Academy for me. I stood next to Charlotte and gave Brunhilde a smile. It would be best to thank her here. Brunhilde, the fashion information you gathered at the Royal Academy proved highly useful. Oh my, I am glad to have been of use to you, she replied with a bright smile, at which point others began gathering to greet us as well. I was something of a curiosity to everyone, given that I had been asleep for two full years, so noble after noble continued to approach. Please do allow me to greet Lady Rosemine as well, came a voice. Uh, oh no! Oh fuck. That's uh, not good! <coughs> this lady's not even supposed to be interacting with Rosemine! 
Oh dear. Well, at least I think Rosemind knows this lady is uh, not too fond of her. My Countess Daldoff, Wilfred said, stepping in front of me before I could say anything. I am glad to see you are in good health as well. Incidentally, I am interested in speaking to Viscount Daldoff. Do you know where he is? Oh my, hello, Lord Wilfred. I shall search for him if you will excuse me. Shikikos' mother hated me, so I was pleased to see her attack get deflected. I was grateful for Wilfred, but as the waves of nobles continued to greet us, I suddenly realized something. Wait, Wilfred and Charlotte are protecting me. Whenever a noble came forward to greet me, one of them would smoothly step between us. Unless I actively stepped forward to introduce involve myself, the exchange would end without me having to say a word. I was now watching their backs as they protected me during noble exchanges, a complete reversal from two years ago. You have both, lear both learned so much, haven't you? I commented. Wolfrey nodded. We couldn't rely on you to protect us forever. The manual about dealing with nobles that Ferdinand had beaten into my head was pretty sizable, as I recalled. It was genuinely impressive that they had managed to master it at such a young age. There is so much to memorize, I imagine it has been quite the struggle. It certainly has, Charlotte replied. But it was not much more than you were ready to study two year we were made to study two years ago, and you had to prepare for my baptism ceremony and winter debut on top of that, correct? I thought I would collapse from exhaustion after seeing all the boards of religious ceremonies that you had to memorize, sister. It seemed that Ferdinand had pushed both the manual for dealing with nobles and the wooden boards covering the spring prayer onto them at once, so they ended up catching a glimpse of the constant studying that I had needed to endure. <coughs> I have been told that you even held of my high bishop work. I am so sorry to have forced so much onto you both. Sister, we too are children of the Archduke. We learned well over the past two years just how important and taxing it is to fill the central district with mana. I intend to participate in spring prayer next year as well. I cannot allow you to shoulder such a heavy burden alone. Right, Wilfried added. We can get it over with a lot quicker if we all help each other. Oh no, they've both grown so much they completely left me behind. As I chewed over how the two of them had grown both in body and spirit, the Archducal couple arrived. They ascended the stage, took their seats, then directed gentle smiles our way, which we naturally returned. The high priest now may now enter came an announcement. Ferdinand walked over the up onto the stage, then gazed across all those below. We welcome the new children of Aaronfest, he announced, his voice resounding through the Grand Hall. No sooner had he spoken, the door opened, and the noble children baptized here started to enter. Uh, some of these kids are taller than me. That still sucks so much that she's so small. Lady Rosemine, Cornelius whispered as I watched some of the children climb up onto the stage to be baptized. There's a boy named Nicholas among those about to have their debut, and he's the son of father's second wife, our half-brother. Dang it, what was her name? Trelude? Trelude? I can't even remember what her name is. Someone will have to mention. It'll probably mention. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. I have been baptized with Elvira, the first wife as my mother, while Nicholas had been baptized with Trudelade, the second wife as his mother. I imagine he and Trudelade will come to, greet you, like, come to greet you later. Is there anything I need to be careful about, I asked, noticing that Cornelius looked a little on guard. No, but Father did ask me to tell you not to show him any blatant favoritism in the Winter Playroom. You have a tendency to be especially sweet with younger family members, so... Since I was the Archduke's adopted daughter, Wolfrid and Charlotte were my main social priority as my adoptive siblings. Then Eckert, Lampert, and Cornelius as my brothers. Nicholas was fairly low on the priority list due to him only being a half-brother, and it was apparently important that I not dote on him excessively. But little brothers are cute too, and I want him to rely on me. You don't want them all to rely on you. That's kind of, uh, too much on you. As an arch noble, Nicholas was the last to play Harshfield at the debut, and his performance made it clear just how much he had practiced. He was a young boy with light chestnut hair and bright blue eyes. Given how little he resembled Karsten, he probably took after his mother, but he was well-built and probably taller than me. The gifting ceremony followed the winter debut. Ferdinand climbed down from the stage, then eight scholars carrying ornately carved boxes moved to take his place, standing in a line. Once everyone was in place, Sylvester strode to the center of the stage. The gifting ceremony shall now begin. New students of the Royal Academy stepped forward. The voice of a scholar rang out, then Wolfried escorted me up onto the stage. We lined up together alongside six other children, the same six we had lined up with three years ago in our debut. I scanned the group and recognized everyone, but they were now a lot all a lot taller than I remembered. My heart sank at how blatantly blatant my own lack of growth was now. 
And that was when Feline caught my eye. She gave a happy smile, which I promptly had returned. It was nice to see a genuinely friendly face after all the weird and curious looks I had gotten so far today. Rose mine, Sylvester called. I shot my head up and stepped forward. One of the scholars set his box down in front of Sylvester, who delicately opened it before taking out the cape and brooch within, which he then held out to me. I ask that you live life to the fullest, that you learn well, grow, and become a noble worthy of Aaronfest. In honor of the god of darkness, I will do my utmost to turn my experience into personal strength, I replied, accepting the cape and brooch before stepping back to rejoin the line. Once everyone had received their gifts... The scholars informed us when we were to move to the Royal Academy. As was tradition, the oldest students would be leaving first, with the new students, Wilfred and me included, leaving on the final day. And so began our daily lives in the winter. The winter playroom and our departure. Lunch followed the gifting ceremony, after which winter socializing began. Before I could participate, however, Ferdinand instructed me to return to my room. I had apparently already moved around more than my body could manage for one day. But I was told that Nicholas and Father's second wife would be coming to greet me. Your health is more important than such oblig obligatory greetings, do you not think? Do not forget that you are moving solely due to the power of magic tools. You collapsing will not disturb your upcoming schedule, and there is not much time until you leave for the Royal Academy as it is. I should not even have to explain this to you, Ferdinand said, giving me on to detail all the potential problems that would arise. I understood that he was worried about me, but my appearance dwindled the longer his speech Appreciation dwindled the longer his speech continued. If you could stop dragging these things out, Ferdinand, you'd be a much better person. I sadly hung my head as I continued to listen, but really, Ferdinand did understand my current health situation better than anyone. He was definitely worried about me, and in order to put an end to his lengthy lecture, I decided to obediently return to my room. Very well, as you suggest, I will return to my room for today. However, since tomorrow is the first day of the winter playroom... I plan to go there in the morning. I need to greet the children who have had their baptism, and I wish to grasp the situation there as well. I will visit your office in the afternoon, so please summon those who gathered the information I gave you yesterday. That was enough for Ferdinand to understand my intention. He nodded, put a hand on his cheek, then furrowed his brow just a tiny bit. You will not be paying them at the, not be paying them at the Royal Academy. Those on the documents I gave you graduated in, two ye in the two years I was asleep. I will pay those still enrolled in the Royal Academy once we arrive there. Yeah, because I'm assuming some of them did graduate while you were asleep, so she can't really give them their money at the Royal Academy because it won't be there. I also had Aaron Fest leaders read the documents Daniel had organized since much like Ferdinand and I, they would most likely each, they would most likely each have their own ideas of what constituted valuable information. This ultimately proved to be the case, with some even asking for follow-ups on certain reports. Those who had provided information that was deemed valuable were paid for their efforts, but the money coming from whichever area the government had found it useful. The scholars didn't know me very well, so they were initially stunned when I came to charge them money, but they could hardly refuse after seeing the Archducal couple and the Knight Commander paying with bemused smiles. And so I acquired the money just as I had always planned to. Ah, yes, you certainly did well to sell the information to various places. Very well. I will arrange for them to be gathered tomorrow afternoon. That is much appreciated. So will you only be at the playroom tomorrow, Charlotte asked, giving me puppy dog eyes once my plans were settled? I faltered slightly, remembering how sad she was about only getting to see me during world practice and the dinner. That may end up being the case. I intend to at least drop by to say hello to everyone, but I truly do not have much time if I'm to compensate for the two years I've missed. Seeing how much the kids my age had grown at the gifting ceremony made me painfully aware of not only my own lack of growth, but also the dangers that I faced. There was no mistaking that I would be mocked and scorned for still looking so young, so what the least I could do was ensure that I didn't fall behind in my studies as well. After all, in order to raise the grades of everyone in Aaronfest, I first needed to achieve excellent grades myself. Attempting to push my study methods without evidence to prove their effectiveness would only make people skeptical. Not to mention, getting in grades is a requirement for me entering the library. Once I had a grasp on the staff of the playroom, I wanted to dedicate as much time as I could to my own studies. I understand how you feel, sister. In that case, may I ask you to prepare rewards to be distributed to the children tomorrow? There are many who have been eagerly awaiting to experience the taste of your sweets again. Certainly, I will make sure to have them ready. I replied with a reassuring smile, and it had completely slipped my mind that Wilfried and her chefs had been preparing the sweets given us at awards for the last two years, so I had nearly, nearly forgotten to prepare some of my own. Ooh, that was close. Thank goodness Charlotte was here to remind me. 
Now that I thought about it, though, it took a lot of money to prepare sweets. Sugar was stupidly expensive, and while honey could always be used as a cheap alternative, the cost would surely mount if sweets were being prepared every day. I could have managed since I was making my own money, but I had to wonder how they managed to afford it. It'd probably be weird for me to ask and then offer to repay them, but still. This was something I started. It was my fault they had to fund it while I was, a, while I was gone. I fell into thought which caused Wolfrey to narrow his dark green eyes. Let me guess, Rosemary, you're planning to leave the playroom all by yourself again, aren't you? Yes, I started the curtain present customs on a whim, and while not much else could be done while I was asleep... I cannot allow you both to continue carrying this burden, I said, causing Charlotte to purse her lips and glare at me with her indigo eyes. Seeing my cute sister give me such a reproachful look actually shook me to my core. Sister, should you truly be taking on more work when you're already so busy with your own matters? Not to mention, Father said it is the duty of all his children to educate those in the playroom and improve Aaron Fest's future grace, did he not? I suppose he did. Charlotte scooted closer, forcing me to slightly raise my head to look up at her slightly higher, intensely smiling face. My little sister was overpowering me, and as I wavered, Wilfrey gave me a friendly slap on the back. In other words, it's our job to leave the playroom, too. You don't get to keep it all yourself. We'll be considered incompetent if we leave it all to you, and you're smart enough to know what that means, yeah? They're both trying to do their work as children of the Archduke, viewing us all as equals. For that reason, it was best for me to figure out what they were skilled at, then delegate work accordingly. Very well, I will observe the playroom tomorrow and delegate the work based on what I see. I suggested. Wolfrey's eyes lit up at once. He patted me on the head while proudly puffing out his chest. Yep, for now, though, you should go and rest. You've got a big day ahead of you tomorrow. Yes, we would not want you to collapse again, Charlotte agreed. Her expression seemed a lot lighter as well. No doubt an indication that she was happy I was trusting her with work. Well, as long as they both want to work, I thought, getting up and heading toward the door to leave the dining hall. Rose mine. Yes, Ferdinand, I asked, turning around to look at him. Your body needs rest, but your mind is still fully capable of work. Continue to read the documents I gave you while in bed. Gladly. I returned to my room, bathed and changed with Friarda and Audley's assistance, then climbed into bed. There was a box of study materials that I needed to read on a nearby table. Goodness, Ferdinand sure has put you through the ringer hat here. Hmm? If he truly wishes for you to rest, he should for forbid you from reading as well. No, Riarda said, not even trying to hide her anger. I simply sighed in relief as I took a book out of the box and spread it open on the bed. As much as I appreciated Riarda's consideration, I was at my calmest while I was reading. To me, Ferdinand had come across as an actual god when he instructed me to continue studying. Unfortunately, there is simply too much I must learn before leaving for the Royal Academy, I said. I have no choice but to read these documents. Aha! Riarda was annoyed about Ferdinand giving me work despite having told me to rest, but I could guess that everyone knew he was simply protecting me from the other nobles. My two years in the Jareev meant I hadn't grown at all, which made the no other nobles look at me with curiosity, scorn, and anything but friendliness. Despite being prepared for it all, the staring and whispering had been more intense than I expected, causing me to lose my patience in no time at all. Wolfrey and Charlotte had protected me, but even so, despite simply being there, had been exhausting. The next day, I headed to the winter playroom with Riarda and Antelie carrying the sweets Ella had prepared. People would start leaving for the Royal Academy today, and Hugo was among the first wave to be moving to my dorm's kitchen. I had told him to keep Ella safe, to immediately report to me if anything were to happen and to have her room prepared just in case there was an incident of some kind. I didn't want to send a young woman like Ella somewhere I couldn't see her, so she was going to be leaving for the Royal Academy with me instead. Of course, the chefs and servants weren't the only ones going. The students and such were heading to the Royal Academy as well. Since Angelica was now on the final grade, she was leaving today as well, leaving only Daniel and Cornelius to guard me. You're going to the Royal Academy tomorrow, right, Cornelius? Yes, the experienced older students enter the, Royal or to the dorms first, and prepare for the younger students to arrive. I entered the playroom while Daniel and Cornelius told me about the dormitory and the advancement ceremony. Good day, sister. Good day, Charlotte. A stir ran through the playroom the moment I entered. The students were old enough to recognize me, but those who had been baptized during the past two years had never seen me before. Some looked as though they had doubted my existence despite all they had heard, while others squinted as they tried to figure out who I was, having most likely not attended the start of winter socializing yesterday. In the midst of all that, Wolfrey took my hand and led me in front of everyone, then raised his other hand to silence them. I imagine some of you do not recognize the young woman before you, given that she spent the past two years recovering. So allow me to introduce you. This is Rosemine, my little sister, and Charlotte's older sister. 
I imagine all the older children among us know that she has invented the picture books, card and playing cards we all use here, as well as the sweets unlike anything we have ever tasted. What? Who? What kind of introduction was that? As they gasped in terror, Charlotte stepped over and put an ex bright, extremely cute smile. Even as she slept, my sister Rose might blessed Aaron Best with her enormous quality of mana. So one would expect from the saint of Aaron Best herself. I am sure you have all heard of her, even if you have not actually seen her, correct? My sister has accomplished feats so great that she has earned my utmost respect. No, stop. Some of the other kids actually believe you. That sheer sense of awe radiating from them is hurting my eyes. I'm a no saint. I wish to deny it with all my might and run away, but Wolfrey and Charlotte were on either side of me. Plus, we were surrounded by guard knights. There was no escape. All I could do was put on a twitchy, noble smile while Riarda sat me on tw down onto the chair she had prepared for me. I permit you all to greet Rose, my Wolfrey said, and a line promptly formed in front of me. It consisted only of the children I had never met before, and so it was only about 30 people long. I'm Bertilde, daughter of Guy Groschel. May I play for a pray for a blessing in appreciation of the serendipitous meaning ordained by the harsh judgment of Ava Glib, the god of life? You may. I went through all the greetings with a smile while receiving the small lights from their blessings. My half-brother Nicholas was standing near the middle of the line, and when he eventually reached me, he knelt down and crossed his arms over his chest with enough enthusiasm that his light chestnut hair fluttered slightly. I am Nicholas, son of Karstadt the Gaunt Knight Commander, and Trudelay. May I pray for a blessing and an appreciation of the serendipitous meeting ordained by the harsh judgment of Avaglade, the God of Life. You may. Once he had finished that greeting, Nicholas moved to leave. I wondered for a moment whether I should have treated him more warmly as his older half-sister, but no sooner had that thought crossed my mind that Cornelius called my name. Have you forgotten my warning, he asked, an intense smile much like Elvira's appearing on his face as he glared down at me? I remember. Thank you. When the children had all finished greeting me, stone slates were distributed to those who had joined the, joined the playroom this year, while Professor Moritz gave a simple test to see how well they knew their letters of math. At the same time, the older kids split into last year's groups, with Wolfried and Charlotte at their center then started playing games of card time cards. They were seeing how much better everyone had gotten since the previous spring. <coughs> I looked around from where I was sitting, impressed, it was clear they had published the pro polished the process, and mastered leading the playroom in my absence. For the first time in two years, Rosemond Sweets would be given as today's rewards, Wolfrey announced. The children immediately reacted in one of two ways. They either blinked in confusion, having never eaten Ella's sweets before, or instantly became very serious. I will use my full power today, Wolf Boy said. This is a battle I cannot afford to lose. Huh? I won't show you any mercy, another explained. And with that, they started a rousing game of Karata. Lady Rosebud, these are documents I put together describing the playroom studies over the past two years. Please look them over more, it said. I took the documents and scanned them. From what I can see, everyone has been managed quite everything has been managed quite well. The documents indicate that the average grade has increased, so we should be safe to increase the difficulty of the math problems. You wish to increase the difficulty again? Morris asked, widening his eyes. I nodded up. Aaron Fest has instructed me to raise the average grade level for the entirety of the duchy while I'm attending the Royal Academy as an Archduke candidate. I will be requesting your help to make this a reality, Professor Moritz. As you wish. That said, I certainly placed quite a burden on you. It hasn't been my intention to start my sleep in the winter, so I left nothing but the vaguest of plans for the winter playroom. It must have been difficult to manage without many precise orders. The jotted down memos I had written for future playroom plans and such had apparently been given to people in the form of orders from me. I can imagine they had all struggled with how unclear they all were. To spring, speak frankly, we encountered many setbacks in the first year, and recovering from them was no easy task. We were forced to repeat a process of trial and error as we discovered all the minor consider, considered ways in which you had been steering things in the proper direction. The winter player does indeed flow smoothly now, but it took our, over two years, us two years to make, reach this point, Morris replied. The confidence he had developed through the past two years of work was now clear on his face. At this point, it seemed safe to leave managing the playroom entirely to him and Charlotte. I must compensate for the two years I was asleep, and so I will be unable to visit the playroom from tomorrow onward. I entrust managing things to you. Mort knelt and crossed his arms in response, and at that moment the game of cards had concluded. The winners let out victorious cries and pumped their fists in the air while Wilfried punched the floor in frustration. Oh, he lost. <laughs> The winners were called over in group order to be given their awards, and with everyone watching on in envy as they bit into the sweets and trembled with delight. 
Uh, I demand a rematch, Wilfred yelled. Creating new teams based on the results come first, Ch uh, Charlotte chided. Wilfred had evidently become too caught up in the game, but that one comment was enough to bring him back to his senses. He stood up, his mouth bent to a frown, and then joined Charlotte to remaking the teams. All in all, the process was handled fairly expertly. Not only were the children gradually separated into students and those too young to be students, but it was clear they were also divided into members of a Wilfried faction and a Char Charlotte faction. Judging by the way the kids uh, flocked to help them. Lady Rose mind came a voice. I turned to see Feline looking up at me and fidgeting. The moment I saw the board she was hugging to her chest, I knew what she had with her. Feline, will you show me your stories? Yes, Lady Rosemine. Her eyes sparkled as she showed me the collection of stories she had gathered over the years. The earlier boards were written with clumsy handwriting and childish par uh, parlance, so they were difficult to read, but two years of practice had only led to her getting better and better. Her grasp of written verse, spoken language had strengthened considerably, and just a gl single glance at the latest board showed just how much she had grown. You certainly have written much, I said, feeling a smile play on my face. You accepted my mother's story into your collection of night stories, and I cannot describe how happy I made me to hear that other nobles have enjoyed reading it, she said. Everyone else was overjoyed to see their stories included as well. The, books in the book in question had included stories collected from the winter playroom. It seemed that children had borrowed copies while I was asleep, and it was heartwarming to hear how they ple how pleased they were to have been they had been to see their own stories within. Wish I could have seen that. They had never anticipated that the stories they had desperately tried to recall in order to borrow teaching materials would be turned into a book. After that, Roderick spent much time gathering new stories. I recall reading Roderick's stories. They were quite enjoyable. I plan to rewrite the others into written language and add them to books as well. Have you written the rest of your mother's stories, Belina? I asked, thinking back to two years ago. She bowed her eyes sadly, then shook her head. No, not all of them. There are some stories I have forgotten, and that makes me very sad. Feline, there are a number of common of common patterns that stories follow, so you will find ones oddly similar to those you know, even in distant lands. There are many students from different duchies gathered in the Royal Academy, yes? Perhaps you could ask them about those stories in hopes of remembering your own, I suggested. Feline's grass green eyes wide, and then she let out a giggle. Lady Rosemont, could it be that you plan to gather stories in the Royal Academy as well? Well, yes, I do. Is this not a perfect opportunity to gather stories known only outside of Arendfest, I replied, puffing at my chest? She knelt down and crossed her arms. I, Feline, swear to gather information from every duchy as an apprentice scholar and offer up their stories to you, Lady Rosemine. I am quite looking forward to it, I replied, and an instant later, a stir ran through the room. Uncomfortable tension filled the air, and a number of the students rushed over in wide-eyed shock. Excuse me, what? Lady Rosamond, have you accepted Feline as your retainer, they asked. Um, excuse me, what? Taken aback by this sudden development, I glanced up at Cornelius, who was standing guard beside me. He seemed to understand what was going on as he smoothly stepped forward. No, she has not. As someone who heard the entire exchange, she said nothing of the sort. Feline simply agreed to grant Rosemine's wi Lady Rosemine's wishes. She may, be take she may be taken as a retainer in the future, but that is presently not the case, she Cornelius said. Some of those gathered sigh of relief, while Feline hugged her boards to her chest again and stepped back into the crowd looking embarrassed and uncomfortable. Lady Rosemond, have you decided upon your retainers yet? One girl asked, having steeled her resolve to speak. Everything finally clicked into place. Wolfred and Charlotte already had followers consolidating around them, and those who hadn't won a place by their side were no doubt aiming for me now, since I needed to have my own retainers assigned soon. Children lived in the shadow of their parents, however, so it wasn't a decision I could make lightly. Selecting those who will serve in the, me in the Royal Academy is a matter I will discuss with Riyadh and my head attendant. Have candidates already been chosen? I didn't know who the candidates were, but considering we were prioritizing members of my mother's faction, I can imagine almost all of them had been decided upon long ago. I couldn't give any clear answers, though, so I decided to evade the question as best I could and ask Riyadh later. The candidates have been chosen, yes, but they will only be announced after I have departed for the Academy, I said with a smile. Attention in the air faded at once, and the qu students quickly dispersed. Oh, I guess I need to learn about my retainers now. Or think about my retainers now. Fourth bell rang while I thought things over. I s exited the playroom and started making my way to my own room for lunch. Riarda, have any have my retainer candidates been chosen? Um, that is, people within my faction and everything? Yes, of course. Much has changed among the factions over the past two years. Riarda and I discussed the matter as we walked, and in the process I learned that my only retainers were Audley, the Three Knights, and Riarda herself. 
The apprentice attendants had apparently been removed from my service while I was gone. Generally speaking, women resign upon getting married or to give birth. Apprentices often seek new employment when the one they serve is away for an unknown amount of time, since the quality of partner they find is greatly determined by their place of work. We are to explain, then noticing that my apprentice attendants have been distributed between Florencia and Charlotte. It is not at all unwise to select your retainers at the Royal Academy dormitory considering that you are going to be living there. There, those you are staying with cannot keep up appearances forever. Sooner or later, they'll show their true selves. But doesn't that mean they'll also see my true self? That's no good at all. Yeah, they'll see your crazy love for books. <laughs> I wonder what they'll think of that. I went to Ferdinand's office after lunch, where those who had gathered information for me were already waiting with the guardians. They were all standing in a line, looking sick to their stomachs. I could guess that receiving a summons for the Archduke's half-brother wasn't very good for the part. <sighs> Ferdinand, everyone seems a little nervous, I observed. Might I ask what your exact phrasing was when you summoned them? To come at once upon finishing lunch. Why? Holy gods, Ferdinand, of course they'll show their lunch, shove their lunches down their throats and rush over when they fr who phrase it like that. My stomach started to ache. I felt so, so bad for them. Hello, everyone. You were not summoned here to be, today to be reprimanded in the least. Riley, you may relax. For I wish to reward your hard work, I explained. The information gatherers sighed in relief while their guardians looked down at me curiously, unsure of what to expect next. Thank you all for dedicating yourselves to gathering information in the Royal Academy while I was asleep. I appreciate that this comes a little late, but you will now be paid in full. The information gatherers blinked in surprise, looking as though they had entirely forgot forgotten about the remaining payment. I took this opportunity to begin calling them up one by one. The Vice Commander of the Knight's Order was quite happy to see your information, I mentioned to the first. Uh, Baron Fest was quite moved by the insight your perspective provided, I then said to the second. I continued to summon them by name, thanking them for their efforts, apologizing for paying so late, giving them a few words of encouragement, and then finally delivering their payments until everyone had been seen to. You were all skilled enough to have obtained information desired by the leaders of Aaronfest. I look forward to your continued good work, I said. Do not falter in your dedication, Ferdinand added. We saw everyone off as they exited the room with motivated expressions, and my studying began as soon as they were gone. There really wasn't much time before I needed to leave for the Royal Academy. Ferdinand, am I really ready for the Royal Academy as I am now? These studies are all an investment for the future. You will pa would pass in your current state, but passing alone is not enough. There is only one reason why I am enforcing these studies on you. Do you know what that reason is? He's asked, narrowing his gr like golden eyes. I can only think of one reason why Ferdinand would take the time to teach me directly when he had so much work to do himself. So I won't embarrass myself as a daughter of the Archduke, right? More or less, I suppose. Consider it an investment for the future. My studies continued until the absolute last minute, and finally it was time for me to leave for the Royal Academy. I put on my mostly black outfit as well as my brooch and cape, which were both the color of ochre, then headed for the teleportation room hall with Fiarda, Angelica, and Cornelius. Had already departed themselves, leaving only Daniel to guard me. The room was dark and windowless. The only light came from the teleportation circle glowing on the floor, upon which servants were stacking bo boxes filled with living necessities. Many people were here to see me off. The Archducal couple, Charlotte, Carset, Elvira, Bonifacius, and Ferdinand with his guard knight, Eckert. Wolverine was going to be teleporting after me, so I could see him and Lampert in the crowd as well. My entire noble family was here. You won't need to worry too much with, Cor with Cornelius around, but please take care of your health, Carset said. Indeed, dear, take care of your health, Avara added. I will eagerly await the day you return, when you can have, we can have a tea party once again. I'll be careful, and I shall look forward to that tea party as well, mother. Do not forget I trained your guard knights, Brother Bashes interjected. Cornelius and Angelica will keep you safe. And while you're gone, I'll train Daniel even harder. You have nothing to worry about. I saw Daniel recoil with fear as Bonifacio's words, but there was no way for me to save him now. The most I could do was offer him my thoughts and prayers. Godspeed, Daniel. Godspeed. Keep an eye out for Ehrenbach, Sylvester said. If there's something you want to know and not... Send out your apprentice scholars. Don't do something so careless as to getting directly involved. As I nodded, Florencia asked me to look after Wilfried as well. Given how much he had grown lately, though, I had a feeling he would be the one looking after me. I can't wait to hear your stories of the Royal Academy, sister. 
Of course, Charlotte, and I shall be trusting you with the playroom while I'm gone. You may count it on me. The last to speak was Ferdinand. Now, Rosemont, I advise you to pass all your exams and return before the dedication ritual begins. Ferdinand, the dedication ritual begins halfway through the winter. Isn't that a bit unreasonable, I retorted. Well, it was true that I had crammed pretty hard for the sake of getting access to the Royal Academy's library. Asking me to put off a, pull off a miracle like that after having missed two whole years of studying was just too much. Ferdinand smirked. For what purpose do you think I assisted you with your cramming despite having so much mark on my own? Well, didn't you say it was an investment for my future? I believe I said it was an investment for the future, he replied with a voiceless smile. I could feel my te cheek twitch. Wait, are you trying to tell me this was all for your benefit? Ferdinand didn't answer my question. Instead of putting on a bright smile so blatantly fake, it made me sick. He wasn't about to claim a clear confirmation I could use against him. I have faith in your abilities, Ferdinand said. You are to finish your exams as soon as possible and return before you investigate any disasters at the academy. Or instigate any disasters you at the academy. Is that clear? Huh. I too avoided giving a clear confirmation, and after giving him a tight-lipped smile, I stepped onto the teleportation circle. Oh, come on. Seriously? Okay, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going. My retainers and entering the dormitory. The teleportation circle filled with mana before shining with black and gold light, the face stone embedded in my brooch shining along with it. I saw the air in front of me begin to shimmer, and for a brief moment I was hit with a feeling of dizziness. Riyarda must have noticed my head wavering because she reached out her hands and hugged me against her. Just as I sighed in relief, I realized that the shapes of those standing in front of me had started to twist about like they were caught in a whirlpool. The sight made me blink in surprise, then rubbed my eyes as I tried to process what was happening. A few seconds passed, and by the time my vision was back to normal, everyone who had gathered to see, us off, see me off was gone. Welcome to the Aca Royal Academy, Lady Rosemine. This is the Aaronfest Dormitory, came a voice. In front of me was a wide open pair of doors with two knights standing on either side to, side to monitor the magic circle. A teleportation circle beneath me was the same as before, and the room looked fairly similar, but I could tell this wasn't the same place by the chairs positioned near the knights, the assorted magic tools nearby, and the fact that all the people who had seen me off were no longer there. If you aren't feeling well, milady, let's hurry to your room, Briarda said, placing a hand on my back and gently guiding me out of the teleportation room. Lord Wilfred cannot teleport until the servants have brought your things to your room. Once through the doors, I found myself standing in a waiting room similar to the one in the castle. This was where those wanting to see the use the teleportation circle would bring their belongings and wait their turn. Though only Angelica and Cornelius were here right now, having come to greet me. It's good to see you've arrived safely, Lady Rosemine. We left the waiting room together and stepped into a corridor lined with doors. It looked so much like one of the castle's hallways that I genuinely doubted whether I actually teleported to the Royal Academy. The Royal Academy's dormitories were made using the creation magic of archdukes who had long since passed, so the aesthetics of a given duchy's dormitory tends to resemble its castle, Riarda explained. Each duchy's dormitory apparently had its own style, with some being fancy, some rustic, some rounded and elegant, some short and crude, and so on. That said, as you cannot enter the dormitories of other duchies, you will only see their exteriors when you're flying on your high beast. It seemed that the brooches we were given during the gifting ceremony were specialized magic tools unique to our respective duchies, so, such that even if one was stolen, it couldn't be used to enter the dormitory of another duchy. Okay, that's good. So if anything ends up getting missing, like stolen, then we'll know it's someone from Aaronfest. This way, Lady Rosemine, your tea has been prepared, Cornelius said. Angelica, Cornelius, where exactly are we going right now, I asked. The common room has been prepared as well, has been prepared to welcome new students. Those who teleported from the castle to the dormitory were unable to enter their rooms until their attendants had finished repairing them, so they waited in the common room in the meantime. Here, the senior students, whose rooms had already been prepared, would welcome their juniors. I'm leaving Milady in your care, Riarda said when we reached the stairs. Then she went up to put over the put away the luggage the servants had brought in. Lady Rosemont has arrived, my guardians announced, prompting some upperclassmen apprentice attendants to begin preparing tea and serving my sweets. When I looked around, I saw some of the other new students in my year nervously sipping their own tea. Please feel free to sit over here, Lady Rosemont, Brynhilda said with her amber eyes narrowed, narrowed in a warm smile, her crimson hair fluttering slightly as she came over. She had been nine when I first debuted in the Winter Playroom, so she was now a 12-year-old student in her third year. 
My, your outfit is simply magnificent. It plays on the Royal Academy's current fashion trends whilst incorporating flower ornaments of your own design. It was made based on the information you provided, Brunhild. Your help was much appreciated, as I am not familiar with the trends of the Royal Academy. It is my wish that your clothing designs and hair ornaments grow in popularity here in the Sovereignty. I would like for Aaronfest fashion to dominate for at least a brief period while I am attending the Royal Academy, Brunhild explained. As a fashionable arch noble who stayed on top of trends, she apparently found it quite humiliating for her home duchy to be considered a backwater. Ooh. I am certain that the trends you established in Aaronfest have the potential to be just as popular in the sovereignty, she continued. I previously asked the archducal couple whether I could spread them myself, but they forbade any such actions until you were attending the Royal Academy. I have been waiting oh, oh, oh so eagerly for you to arrive. This year will certainly be the best one yet. Brunhild's smile remained just as bright as she spoke about spreading sweets and fashion throughout the sovereignty, her eyes burning with the same naked ambition as I often saw from Alvara. In all honesty, I found it a little overwhelming. I only ever made things when the thought struck me or when I needed something in particular, so all this business about trends was pretty much beyond me. Lady Brunhild, we mustn't just speak of your own interests. How can you expect Lady Rosemine to relax one girl chided as she quietly stepped forward? Locks of emerald green hair framed her face with a rest tied into a long braid that rested over her shoulders. She was a bit shorter than Brunhild, and the fact that I couldn't remember speaking to her meant that she probably already entered the academy by the time I joined the playroom. Very true, Lisleta. Do forgive me, Lady Rosemont. It seems I was so overjoyed that I forgot myself. Think nothing of it, Brunhild. Brunhild, I understand with well how you are determined to strengthen Aaronfest's influence. That is an important trait for any arch noble to have, I said reassuringly. Brunhild stepped back with a sigh of relief, at which point Le Lysleta stepped forward to take her place. My apologies for the disturbance, Lady Rosemine. Please enjoy your stay, she said with a polite smile before quietly leaving. Okay, so that's uh, Brunhild, that's Lysleta, and I'm guessing that's Cornelius. Lacelet's hair, let us ha let us hair was tightly braided so that it wouldn't get in the way when she moved, and her dark green eyes shone with an intelligent light. The colors were all different, but she looked a lot like Angelica. They had to be sisters or at least cousins. Really? Oh, okay. I turned to look Angel at Angelica, who was standing behind me. Lacelet certainly looks like you, doesn't she? Yes, yeah, she's my little sister. She's very competent, unlike me, so our parents compliment her all the time. Lysleta seemed to be quick-witted and tactful. She was spending all her spending, speeding all around the room, preparing damp clothes for those who had dirtied their hands with sweets, pouring fresh tea for the newly arrival, arriving students, and so on. She carried herself with restraint, saying that only that which was necessary as she worked with an unfaltering smile. It all went to show just how well relaxed she was. While she looked a bit lo like Angelica, the way she spoke and acted couldn't have been more different. Was that skilled attendant bloodline her parents mentioned and fully concentrated on Delay's let? Well, Angelica, was it not the case that you simply have a poor affinity for attendant work? You are an excellent knight, are you not? That's exactly right, Lady Rosemine, came a sudden voice speaking up in defense of Angelica. I blinked in surprise while Angelica frowned slightly. Lady, Judi Lady Judith, she said, sounding troubled. Judith was one of the girls I had seen in the playroom three years ago. I seem to recall her being one year older than me. She had sparkling violet eyes and fluffy bright orange hair that was bundled into a ponytail just like Angelica's. Lady Angelica is an expert in enhancement magic despite being a med knight, and she's so skilled that even Lord Bonifacius has recognized her talent and took her on as apprentice. She's amazing. On top of that, she's received her favor, Lady Rosemont, and her monoblade has a mind of its own. It can even talk. What other monoblade can do that, Judith said, ex Stoling Angelica's virtues at length. I want to raise a mana blade of my own, but I don't have the mana for it, and I can't do enhancement magic either. It certainly was nice to hear my guard knight receiving so much praise. I listened with a smile before voicing my agreement. Yes, it is amazing that Angelica has learned to use enhancement magic so well, isn't it? Lord Bonifacius did tell me that she was grown much while I was asleep. Exactly. I want to be strong enough for Lord Bonifacius to recognize my efforts, too. Lady Angelica is my role model. Well, well, well. Looks like Judith is a member of an Angelica cult. She pretty much worships her. Lady Judith, please leave it at that, Angelica interjected. You're right, Lady Rosemont can't relax like this. To think you even take perfect care of your charge, Lady Angelica, I have so much to learn from you, if you'll excuse me. 
It occurred to me that Judith was actively interpreting Indalga's words and actions in the best, most convenient way possible. I glanced up to see that Angelica was trying not to make eye contact with Judith while Cornelius was barely containing his laughter. It seemed that she was so unaccustomed to receiving praise that she didn't quite know how to react to the avalanche of compliments. Judith certainly is a good girl, isn't she? I said. No, she's a weird girl, not a good one, Angelica replied, correcting me with a thoroughly troubled expression. I smiled and scanned the room. A thick carpet was spread across the floor and the walls were covered in tapestries, all of which incorporated the color of, uh, color of our capes. It was as if I was looking o it was as I was looking over those decorations that I noticed a bunch of young students sitting at an isolated table. They were all staring at the floor, and during the briefest moment they glanced up, I could see a profound sadness in their eyes. They evidently wanted to join in with the others, but something was stopping them. Roderick, who had worked so hard to get stories from me, was among them. Cornelius, why are these sto students sitting at such a different such a distant table? I asked, looking turning to look at him. Oh, okay. These are the children of nobles belonging to the former Veronica faction. Some of them were among those who tricked Lord Wolfried into disgracing himself during the hunting tournament two years ago. They are being kept at a distance so they do not endanger either of you. A great many people had been in the former Veronica faction, which came as not a surprise given that it had been once been the largest faction in the duchy. It hadn't fully collapsed, even after two full years, and a solid core of the students in the Royal Academy were now considered worthy of suspicion. This meant that around 15 of the 65 students living in the dormitory were being isolated. It was for my safety, of course, but keeping them excluded would make it a lot harder for me to boost everyone's grades at once. Is there anything we could do to get them on our side, I asked? Unfortunately, this is simply how factions function. Eckhart has told me that Ferdinand was once isolated in a similar manner despite being one of the previous Archduke's sons, all as a result of the Veronica faction ostracizing him. Before Eckhart joined the academy, Ferdinand's only retainers had been those directly in order to serve him by the previous Archduke. I tried to imagine Ferdinand sitting alone looking on at the Veronica faction in envy, but that mental image didn't really fit him. He had almost certainly walked the lonely road of a mad scientist with glee, pleased to have people avoiding him. As he had mentioned, he had used all manner of tricks and excuses to stay in the Royal Academy, doing whatever he could to remain in the one place he could truly be free. The castle was apparently a terrible place for Ferdinand, but he was pretty lively at the Royal Academy, according to Eckhart. He surely tricked all sorts of people into investing in the future, just like he did with me. Lord Warfried has arrived, came an announcement. Sorry about the wait, Warfried said as he entered with his attendants. His retainers prepared tea and sweets for him. As they busily moved around, he sat down in the chair next to mine. So this is the Royal Academy, huh? It sure looks a lot like the castle. It certainly does, came a sudden voice from behind him. I turned around to see a slender, serious-looking woman wearing a calm smile. She looked to be somewhere between 35 and 45, and my first thought upon seeing her was that she reminded me of a scientist, almost certainly due to the monocle covering resting over her left eye. I am Hersher, dorm supervisor of the Arenfest dormitory, she said. It turned out that Hersher was formerly an Arenfest noble, but had moved to work in the Sovereignty after securing a high enough grades. She was now a professor at the Royal Academy, where she held lectures on magic tools. Ferdinand contacted me for the first time in quite a while recently. It seems you are his prized disciple, Lady Rosemine. I am quite interested to see what miracles a genius prodigy Taught by the man who received perfect grades in the Archduke course, Knight course, and Scholar course all at once, will show me. Prize disciple? Genius prodigy? Um, when have these terms ever been used to describe me? And how am I possibly supposed to live up to such high expectations? Before I could even consider how to respond, Hersher shot me a smile and moved to the center of the room where she began explaining the dormitory rules to the new students. The girls' rooms were on the third floor, the boys' rooms were on the second floor, and communal spaces such as the dining hall and common room were all on the first floor. Boys were prohibited from going up to the third floor, and apprentice knights would take shifts watching the stairs for this very reason. The rooms at the farthest end of the second and third floor were for Archduke and Archduchess Kent, respectfully. Or were for them, respectfully. They were used when they were visited from the Archduke Conference, which was held here at at the Royal Academy. If you fail your exams and are forced to spend your spring here at the Royal Academy, the Archduckle couple will remember you for all the wrong reasons, Hersher warned. Do take care, everyone. Oh no, Angelica. Oh no. The girls' and boys' floors each had three rooms for Archduke candidates. 
It was tradition for arch nobles to use the rooms furthest back, while lay nobles used the rooms closest to the stairs. But retainers were exempt from this rule since they always had rooms by their charge. Lay nobles and men nobles normally had to live in shared rooms, but those who saved up enough money could rent one of their own. Meals were eaten in the dining hall on the first floor, while all, with all the students being told when it was opened. We were also expected to prepare our own food, baths in our own rooms, just like at the castle. The advancement ceremony and fellowship gatherings will be held two days from now, with classes beginning the day after. You have until then to adjust the dormitory life and ensure you are ready for your lectures. Remember, preparation is essential for all things. Any questions? I have a question, I exclaimed, immediately shooting my hand up. Hersher looked my way, as did everyone else. Does the dormitory have a book room, I asked excitedly. Hersher forced a smile. There is no book room in the dormitory, as the Royal Academy has its own fully-fledged library. Incidentally, the library will open when classes begin. New students will be taught how to use it in order of duchy, and only then will they be allowed to freely enter. She must have been able to tell how hard my heart was pounding in my chest as her expression grew even more bemused. You certainly are passionate about your studies, Lady Rosemine. I am sure that an Arch 2 candidate showing such dedication will encourage the others to work hard as well. I look forward to seeing what you accomplish. So you're telling me that as an Arch 2 candidate, my reading will make other people read too? Oh goodness, I guess it's my duty to read all the, to all the time then. Viarda came up to me once Hersher had fully had finished her explanation. Your room is ready, milady, she said as she urged me on long. The corridors were about long enough that I was told to use my high beast, and so I brought up my panda bus and climbed into it. This is as far as I can go, Cornelius said when we arrived at the stairs for the third floor. He couldn't go beyond the second floor, given that he was a boy, and so Angelica will be my only guard knight from the, this point onward. When we reached the third floor, I found myself in a long corridor lined with doors on both sides. My room was right at the back, which was much further away than I had anticipated. I probably would have collapsed midway had I needed to climb the stairs and walk the entire way without Leslie. This is your room, lady. The interior wasn't much different from my room back at the castle. I could imagine this had been done deliberately so that I would feel more comfortable and so that Riarda would have an easier time moving around. Now, milady, let's decide on your retainers. Is there anyone in particular who has caught your eye today? Please select those from this list. I took a seat at my desk, though I suppose it was technically my study desk here at the Royal Academy, and saw that there were already several sheets of paper lined up for me to look, up, for me to look at. On them was a list of students that Cornelius had prepared for me, and beside each name was one of three marks, uh, marks representing how suitable each person was to be one of my retainers. Those with a circle were completely acceptable. Those with a question mark I could choose but weren't necessarily ideal due to various quirks and their families or status, and those with a cross were best avoided due to being untrustworthy. There were also students with Warfried or Charlotte's initials next to their names, indicating that they were already serving as their retainers. Let's see here. Brunhild Circle, Lazlet, Lazletta Circle, Judith Circle, Feline Question Mark, Roderick Cross. I mentioned the names I recognized while looking down at the list. Roderick was one among those who tricked Lord Wolfried, so he is by no means fit to serve you, milady. Is it not probable that he was just doing what his parents told him to without realizing the implication? I think we should talk to him about this due to see do about this to see whether he deserves a second chance like we did for Wilfried. The point still stands that we presently do not know him well enough so he cannot be trusted as your retainer, Riarda said, instantly shooting down my suggestion with an argument I couldn't refuse. I will arrange for any of the others to be your attendants, perhaps Brunhild and Lazletta as apprentice attendants and Judith as an apprentice guard knight. If you so wish, I can, we can, you can also introduce Felaine as an apprentice scholar, Though, as she is a lay noble, you will need an apprentice arch scholar to train and support her. I'd suggest, uh, Hartman, lady. Milady, if you have no objections. Who is Hartman? Audley's youngest son. He is a friendly young man who loves talking to people. Much like his father, he's quite good at gathering information. Wait. Is this Father Justice? Oh my god, if that's the case, what a small world! Hartman was about Cornelius' age and had entered the Royal Academy before I was even baptized, so I didn't really know him, but him being Audley's son and having Riarda's recommendation meant I had no reason to doubt his abilities. With that settled, it would be wise to select an apprentice knight to take Cornelius' place when he graduates. What about Trogut? He's the child of my daughter and Lord Bonifacius' son. Wait, grandfather's and your grandson?
I can only imagine how powerful he must be. Hold on. Child of my daughter. Oh, 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 okay, okay. So Lord Bonifacio's son is Traugott's father. Okay, okay, okay. I got myself confused there for a second. <laughs> He is nothing compared to Cornelius, who was trained by Lord Bonifacius and taught your mana compression method, so I would say he still has a long, very long way to go. Trogat had previously been considered to serve Wolfried, but as nobody knew when I would permit Wolfried's guard knights to learn my own new comp mana compression method, he hadn't been very enthusiastic about it. Wolfried had apparently struggled to secure retainers now that he was no longer guaranteed to be the next Archduke. Moving on, Riarda continued, having Judith take Angelica's place when she graduates is fine, but Angelica is not much of a teacher. What are your thoughts on this? Riarda is right, Lady Rosemine. I'm sorry, Angelica said, though she didn't sound at all torn up about it. Riarda sighed. Cornelius could teach her, but there are many things that are best left between women. You will want either a head female knight or an apprentice female knight who can work with Cornelius to teach Judith. Do you have any ideas, Angelica? Mir Angelica merely tilted her head. It seemed she hadn't considered the matter in the slightest, and she wasn't about to start considering it either. Are there any female apprentice knights who could think, think in your place, Angelica? I asked with a bemused smile. Her expression became serious in an instant. Lenore is friends with Angelica, and I think she's smart. You truly have no intention of ever thinking for yourself, do you? No, not at all. Oh no, it looks like Angelica has given up on using her mind even more than she had two years ago. Master, you truly are foolish, Stanlick scolded. It's not always ideal to give such blunt answers. The more you study under your teacher, the more you rely on feelings and instincts over thought. This trend must be reserved, reversed. Things weren't adding. There wasn't anything for me to add in that regard. This kind of strict lecturing was best left to professionals like Stanlick with his Ferdinand voice. Let me ask Lenore, Lenore and then progress things further if she's receptive, I said. As you wish, milady. This concluded the initial selection of my retainers. Okay, I'm going to end this off here, and I'll see everybody next time.